Hello and welcome to Tights TV. Today I've got Tom on. So Tom, uh, thanks for joining me, mate. I'm really pleased to uh, really pleased to be on it. We're um, it was good to meet you the other night and see a few fans who I've seen faces around um, for the uh, for the evening with uh, Nirav. Um, it was good to put some names to faces and all that kind of stuff. So that was good. I yeah, appreciate it. Cheers. So yeah, just on about that uh, Friday evening with Nirav. Well, you know, 180 people there. Some were a bit frustrated. Some were a bit still questions to be answered and a bit unsure but for me uh tom i'm thinking that it's it was good for him to be via and he must put his son via because the amount of times he's kept saying i've got a target on my back um is he's got a lot of things to wanting to change and i believe i think i were coming across he's got good intentions but he does want to change things do you yeah, I think there's a well. There's a couple of things. The atmosphere in the room was uh, were quite strange, really, wasn't it? Because there were mm. a, there were a proper mix of there were a mix of ones who were still very angry. There was mm. a mix. Of, there were some who were there who were wanted to find out as much information as possible. I think that were I think that were me and you, really. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just trying to find out what were just the direction and just about a little bit more clarity. But it was a it was strange, really, because you got some. Um, quite a lot of different bits, <laughs> different attitudes of supporters, and I think that's where we're at the moment. We're at the we're at a stage where we've got a lot of there's a lot of different people with different views and different things, and it, it, it's almost like we need to bring it back together. We need yeah. to bring it back together and get everybody on the same page. Um, and I think one thing that we're really really clear from it, we had this we had the chat there on the night that it's obvious that there's been a lot of um fallings out there's been a lot of different people coming at it from different angles and the lack of leadership is mm. is something that's really really obvious it's like it's come from all different angles and it where we've had uh conway involved and then you've had i i honestly don't know how much say um near i've had in any of the stuff that's gone before mm. um that's one thing that became really clear he, he were almost he were almost making out and he almost to me it seemed like he was saying it's not to do with me kind of thing. Hmm. Um but he did say he kept saying target on me back, didn't he? He kept saying yeah. that. Um uh, but the thing I got with near have is like what you've just said on beard is that he he was the one, I think he was like a silent majority where he were wanting and because the amount of times he kept praising Sol Bauer for his attitude and what he brought to the club, not just his team, but yeah. by experience and stuff like that. And it, the kind of impression I was getting, like what you just touched on there, Tom, is that they didn't really take notice in him. And it, well, I think he was more frustrated that that, that, that it won't, they weren't addressing it how it should have been addressed. Near have like saying that, you know, that experience, that leadership, that quality, you do want to, it helps, on, it helps with a young team and stuff like that. And like I say, he... he you know, he was ask, asking questions like you just said there were a broad section, and rightly so. People were upset, frustrated, and wanted questions. And I think that accountant and that, that accountancy bloke, you know, he were on about about seven hundred fifty thousand pound. And near, I was like, you know what? Yeah, it's he um, don't want to go through it for court legal proceedings and stuff like that. But he kind of understands what happened because yeah. he did. I think it, we're getting to end it end it stage where he was saying that. So I'm, I'm sure someone asked it and said what's been feelings of it over and he said i think we all know as fans what's happened in the last four years we're not blind and yeah, yeah. But, but for me i think in he knows a lot of stuff what's gone off problems at club definitely and i think the track i think the the transparency transparency thing going forward is going to be really really important because mm -hmm. i think that's something that's been really missing um because i think as fans barnsley fans in particular appreciate honesty and appreciate do you know I could even have, I said to you on the night, I could have taken last season if we'd have done something and been really clear, been really clear about what we were doing. Mm. There was no, the fans had nothing, they just didn't have anything to hold on to last year because mm. there was no, um, and I don't want a statement every week saying we're going to do this and we're going to do that. It's just a case of if you've got thousands of fans asking, where are we at? What's happening? What's going on? They're not all wrong, are they? Mm. Do you know mm. what I mean? They're not all wrong. And you've even got you've got some who are really passionate, who are 
will shout and swear and do all that kind of stuff. And then you've got others who will chat it through and be a little bit more patient. But I think even the most patient ones were running out of patience. Yeah. And and the desperate, the fans have always been desperate to support the team. Always. That's that's never been in question. Mm. They've always been desperate. Even these one, even the people who won't be renewing and won't be doing that uh, and won't be getting on board. They've had enough. They're desperate to support the team. If they have something to hold on to, they will hold on to it. Um, and I think that's what it is. Like you said, Vera, it's, it's that bit of transparency and the statement what, uh, what Jean Crime put out in press and she was saying, you know, we know what it means to uh, community and club, what it means to people, hard working. And uh, Nareev, he, he touched on that as well. And he even said, I mean, he, he openly said it, Vera, is that, he it won't be there day in day out on running the club because he's got his uh, thing over in India. But what he does want to see is that the people what are in their positions as they are now, whether it be Khalid or uh, Gene or James Crane, to actually do their job and their role. And if there is an issue, then yeah, I'll get involved. This is, but he believes that the people what are going to be there now is more than capable of moving this on, which I find a bit bizarre when you know. Whereas before it was like Conway and Lee won't be, but we're still, you know, still want it country. But we're having so much of a say what we're happening at the club, yet we're not there. Whereas Nareev is like, is more or less focusing. He knows what he wants. I believe if he knows what he wants and direction he wants to go. And he's wanting them to do it. Whereas under current regime, it didn't seem any of that. It was like, well, this is how it's going regardless. I think it's different with under Nareev. Yeah. One of me. I think one of me me nagging doubts from when from the other night, one of me things that I I still had plenty of questions about was the I think the leadership thing still does still does concern me. Hmm. Um and I think it concerns me more with the fact that we've not got a manager in, we've not got that kind of thing. But what kind of manager can we attract? Because I'm looking at the moment and I'm thinking that we're not a we're not a great proposition, I don't think. I really don't because I think uh, the the stuff with that I don't think it's attractive to a manager for us to have the model that we've got or the model that we've had, and I also think that we're in a state where actually the finances aren't great. And and, and I, he, when he was talking the other night, he was very careful about what he said, and he hmm. he has got to be careful about what he says. Um, but we are in a bit of a precarious situation now because we are, um. We've we've lost the money from going down to relegation, which is why we're even more bizarre mm. the way that we the way that we played it last year. Because I said to you, didn't I? Yeah. It was the most avoidable relegation you've ever seen. It was so yeah. avoidable from the minute we started the season, or even the minute we went to pre-season. To I would say probably I would say a point in Poyo was probably the end end game. But yeah, we could have we could have sacked shop six weeks before. Mm. Um. We could have got Warnock in, who, whether you like him or you don't like him, he'd have kept us up because that squad work was, uh, uh, although it wasn't perfect, he could have kept him up. Mm. And he would have brought in some players who wouldn't fit the system. Mm. Um, and I just, I just wonder, I just wonder as a manager now coming in, are we an attractive proposition? I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure we are. Um, I think I'd love to. I'd love to think. I'd love to think that we were. I'd love to think that we were. I think looking at what I think he, he more or less admitted, like he didn't directly come out of service, is that he more or less admitted that we have, we have missed that leader and that quality as an experience on pitch for players, and it, it get, kept on about tweaking this analysis model, database thing, and all that tweaking it because we're looking at for like for the. Because some questions got asked as well. Well, oh, have I've been looking for a certain age group, and they were like, "No, uh, it's looking for any age group and the characteristics what we're going to bring into it, and same as managers and stuff like that." Mm. And I'm thinking should, this should have been done earlier. And that for me, this goes to show how much they didn't ever say in it, even though we were on board. Yeah. They didn't ever say in it. It was them two others what have gone. How much control and influence they had over it, and this is what what we're going and our failings and. Like you just said, Via, you look at some we were we were on about it. It's like it's it was it was so doable that that championship to survive. I mean, you look at your, your teams what were already on minus points to start with, and we'll finish bottom of the league behind them. So well, I think I think it's I think it says a lot about the 
I, I think last season was one of the poorest championships going and we got relegated by by a distance. Hmm. Um, you look at Huddersfield, well done to them, by the way. What a, what an achievement that was to yeah. get to, with, with the, but, but it shows what you can do because they've had to balance the books, they've had to do those things. But going back to the the standard, the one there were there were a couple of teams who came to us last year who I thought, yeah, they're decent. Mm. And apart from that, I'm looking and I'm thinking it's much of a muchness, you know. I really, I really, do, I really do believe that in the championship as well. Um, and I think we, um, I, I, the 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 one thing that I really can't get my head around about the whole Conway scenario and all that kind of stuff was. If you're losing eight million or whatever it is when you get relegated, what kind of business is that? Yeah. What kind of what kind of model is that? That's not a model, is it? That's just that's just daft. It's bizarre. Self-destructing it. Self-destructing it, isn't it? Yeah. Of course it is. And I just think now we've got to. We, we it's almost like we've got to say right, clean slate, let's go. Yeah. That's so, what it seems like. I mean, before going into that and coming out in it, did you feel any different? Did you feel that? Well, some of them, I've, I'm a bit more optimistic now than what I've come out of. I, I were a bit, I, on some of them, I were a bit more optimistic. But like I said, I think there's still a few questions there what still need to be answered is in yeah. regards to the club itself. Regarding, yeah. not, not so much for players and the manager. I think that'll take more to take care of itself, but I think more for club itself. I think um, it was strange, it's strange, isn't it? Because when you're there, you, you have your own opinion when you're there and then... You go away and have a think about it afterwards, mm. and and some of your things you question a few things. I've watched it back, and um, there were a few, there were a few daft questions that I thought weren't really di didn't need to be asked. I thought yeah. we could have got a little bit deeper there than than some of the questions that got asked. Um, I mean, everyone's with, well, we're in the rights to ask whatever question they want. Mm. And that's not, I'm mm. not saying that, but I think we could have probably got a little bit more into it um, in terms of some of the questions asked, but. I think it's like a, it's a, it's difficult for fans to see at the moment because we, without the manager, I think it's difficult for them to see. I mm. think they missed the boat on a few of it. I think we could have appointed somebody earlier, and it could have been look, we've got this, and we're, this is in place, and it could have been really like a like a really, an intent. This yeah, is where we we're going to go. Yeah. And I, re I really, I really think it was a missed opportunity in terms of um, g and the fans up, getting the fans on board. I really think it were a missed opportunity because if you look there, they all, everybody who was there, whether they were angry or whether they were whatever they were, they were all wanting something to positive, something to hold on yeah. to. And I think yeah. just like a case of we, we, we've got this manager in place, we really believe in him, we really believe in this that we're doing. We've got this this player, that player that we're tracking, and we do. Do you know there were none? Uh, there were nothing to really hang your hat on and say this is this is what we. This is what we're after. This is what we want. Mm. We want some positivity. We want that. And and he was realistic. And he was. I, I think he's um he's a genuinely decent bloke. Mm. I think that comes across. That comes across um for sure. But does he have? Do, I, what understanding has he got of English football? What understanding has he got of the of mm. of the? Uh, do you know? And and I look at this, and I know there's a lot to be. I know people say, "Oh, we want an English manager. We want these people in place. We want this." It's not to do with whether they're English or not. It's not to do with where they're from or or what. It's to do with the experience and the and the understanding of what is required, what people need to hear, what people want to hear, mm. and when they and when they want to hear it. And I think we maybe I, I still feel like we're a bit naive about stuff. We're still a bit naive about. There needs to be a bit of. We need to get the pride back. We need to get the pride back in everything. Do you think? Because uh, I, I get where you're coming from with that, and it's it's going to lead me on to this question for you, for you, then, Tom. So I know you've got James and Gene crying, and Martin Devane has still got that bit of connection via. And would you say with Nareev, he's got good intentions, and you know, and like I said, he, he, he more or less fell in love with club, and is is. Is here, he's bought into it, kind of thing, which I generally kind of, kind of do get because I think he does come across pretty well, and it just come across as like a genuine, sincere bloke, and he really wants to do well. But an amount of times today, targets on the bat. But do you think someone like, um, so I think like a, a director of football or, or a club ambassador, like like a club ambassador or a director of football coming into club would be 
bridge that gap between boardroom and manager and like also a bit of positive for fans as well, like uh, a club legend kind of thing. You think yeah. that would help? Yeah, we we and we had a bit of a we had, we had a bit of a um, chat about potato. I, I I don't I don't want to go back to you know we, we said about like Danny Wilson and stuff like mm, I wouldn't mm. I wouldn't go back to Danny Wilson being manager not by a long shot but no but but somebody just uh, um just give a little bit of um a, la- a bit of now you know what I mean a little bit of let's think about let's think about what what we can do in this situation and let's think mm. about. Maybe you don't want to do your press conference today because we've got this coming up, or maybe you want to try your preseason uh, f- friendlies. You want to take them here because we need to do a little bit of this. Or mm. do you know just a bit of now in day to day running of, of 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 the club? I think when you're appointing somebody like a a poyer or a, or, a, or a shop or those kind of people, you, it's almost like you've left them to their own device. You've almost hung them out to dry, really, mm. because what does poyer ask Baggy know about? The, the culture, championship, yeah, the players, yeah. the culture, all those things, and that's not a criticism of him, by the way, not mm. not at all. What mm. I'm saying is, is, is you're appointing these people, and these people, they were, and they talk about stats, and they talk about, well, they've won these games, and they've won this, and they've, they've done this, and they've got these coaching badges, they've got this and other. What about whether they can fit into a culture? What about whether yeah. they have got any contacts within the English game? What about whether they, um. What do they know about? What do they know about the players that we've got already? And like Be- fixture situation, because it's like week and midweek and week and midweek, and because we don't have battle draw as yeah. well. You know, there's a lot of things. The intensity, the intensity mm. of the league as well. You're right, hundred percent. The intensity of the league is it's a it's a Tuesday, a Tuesday Saturday or Wednesday Saturday, and and then you've got your cup competitions and you've mm. got your there's 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 so much to consider. Yeah. Um. And I just feel like the the more and more I think about those kind of appointments, the more bizarre I think it is. Mm. Um, but if you are going to go, and you are going to go down that line, you've got to put the support in place for that kind of appointment. Um, and again, I'm not against a, a foreign manager, not not at all. I think there's some. I mean, look at Ishmael and how he came in. But Ishmael came with a plan, and he knew how to get the best out of the players. Mm. And he knew straight away and he saw that they weren't technically the best players. So we said, right, we're going to play this way. We're going to do this. We're going to play with this kind of mentality and we're going to play with this kind of formation. We're going to play with these these players. This is what I think is the best to get out of them. And he will prove right. Yeah. And he will prove yeah. that absolutely right. But then we've got Conway or whoever is saying it that, Oh well, we've got to play in a better way because the the players aren't worth anything when they're playing in this formation. What a load of rubbish that is! Mm. So you're telling me that Styles is worth is worth more now than he was end of last season after a successful season, and yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Styles, we're talking about bids there for a million, five million, maybe whatever. I'm just throwing figures about there, but is not we're not looking at anything like that now, are we? No, no, and. The other clubs out there as well, looking at situation with with what's happened to us, we've gone down, knowing that we're gonna to have to balance books some way or another. And Nadiv did pass on this as well, saying that um uh, bids when they do come in, it's got to be fit best for club and player itself. But when you're looking at that, you're looking at the sale of blast, that's what we're gonna to have to look. Yeah, we're gonna to have to sell two maybe three players. I'd sell a couple of players if we could though, depending on what value we'll go for, rather than selling a you know, say four or five or six. But again, in this transfer market, we all know that there's not that many clubs going to be splashing cash about because they're, they're watching their own financial constraints as well, aren't they? Well, if I were a Coventry, a Preston or someone like that, I'd be putting in cheeky bids, mate. I'd be, mm. I'd be trying to pick them off. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what our history is like in, in terms of getting rid of players on the cheap and panicking mm-hmm. and doing that kind of thing. I'd be uh, if I were Coventry, I'd be saying right, five hundred grand for uh, Callum Styles, then take it or leave it. Or, <laughs> you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? And, and, yeah. No, but you know, you know that you know that there's a po- uh, every possibility that we might crack and just say, hey. mm. do you know what Check I mean? Money. And this is what this is again goes back to the plan that we had before. Um, how how flawed it is in terms of now we're looking at flogging players because we've got they've got a year left on the contract, mm. and and the the players who last year supposedly were worth this worth that it's 
it, we've got to start again and we've got to really start. And I'm not, I, do you know what? I don't mind the, the, the stats and the model. We've got some good players out of it. But mm. you've got to, you've got to be flexible because what last year, the stubbornness and the arrogance and the and the the complete um, inflexibility of said model, yeah, meant that we got relegated. Yeah, there's no two ways about it. That yeah. that was that's the that's the overriding reason why we got relegated because we were so stubborn and arrogant. Well, we weren't as fans because we knew what it, we wanted. We, we knew yeah. what we wanted. Yeah. And we knew what it needed what needed to happen. And if it hadn't have happened, if we had have changed it, and this is what I was getting at before, if we had have changed it and we had have actually put gone for somebody who, who could have potentially kept us up, fans would have accepted that. Mm. I think a lot of bands of fans we don't expect them to win every week. We don't expect that. We expect it, them though to, to have a little bit of a I don't know. We, the, the, every, so at least compete in a game, take it to them, and, and yeah, and, yeah. And show fans that this is what we're trying to do, rather than just in some games. And I, you know, you probably watch them as well. In some games, you think we've just sat back, being we just we just literally we've gone self destruct and we've, we've invited it and done it as sin. We've got nobody else to blame. Then we're looking at other teams and what relying on other teams. What's their yep. situation is, and we should be taking our the center is on, you know, Barnsley. Mm. I'll ask you a question then, Neil. What do you, what like what do, where do you what what's your expectations for this season? Because I, I honestly at this moment in time, I really I am just people ask me and I'm just like I've well, I have no idea. Before I went into that, before I went into the meeting, like uh, we were I'm talking to a, a lot of people and there's like uh, Brian from Foreign Legion as well. He was he were outside of me and I'll give him a shout out because he was coming out some good stuff as well. Before I went into the I thought we'd honestly be struggling to be mid table because I I was thinking we're gonna to have to have a cartload of players go out, a bit unsure at manager going in. Obviously Conway and Lee will still be at time. But since they've gone and I know that and people will be jumping on saying yeah but PMG have still got the shares in club and we sat over but the, the, the big the bigger difference is, is that they've got no control in saying club. For me, I'm gonna be saying if we finish it top ten, I think we've done pretty well. But again, it all depends with manager. But then I can see no reason why we can keep a majority of the squad together. And I know some players will go, but if we can retain them and we've got a manager that's allowed to manage and allowed to, or a coach, allowed to do what he wants to do with the help of it, added a bit of experience in, I can't see why we can go for, sounds daft, like playoff at best. But there's a lot of inputs from Mebbies. And the one thing I don't want to happen. Is what's happened to like your son, your son ones have been. If if you if you just finish it like mid table or you just finish outside top six and you end up, well, you're wallowing in division one for how many seasons? Yeah. I don't want that to happen. So for me, I'd rather as wallow in League One than get relegated again. Though, Neil. Oh that's, yeah, that's what yeah. I'm worried about. That's what I'm yeah. worried about. Yeah, I mean, a lot's going to say on manager or head, I keep saying manager, but head coach over going to yeah. approach and. If you look at betting, and we've all looked at betting, it's like Michael Duff, and you've got Warnock, and then you've got like Hasselbank and that. But then, because said that, other managers and also there's someone a magic uh, rabbit eye to at and either go. But I'm thinking we, what what they tell us, uh, I think it, they said we're four manager, uh, four British based managers, and one foreign, we believe. So you'd like to think that they're going into the next stage and uh, you know final final stages. I've not seen them. I've not seen anything today. I've been at work, mm. obviously. Anything come no. out today or no? I've been looking and there's been not coming out. And with what I've been like listening and hearing to, I'm more believe it's going to be like next week after bank holiday because I think players is it pre season on June uh, six of June, isn't it? It's the sixth, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So I'm thinking that if they get someone in probably of a weekend or early next week, and then that's going to be a lot to say because. We've, we've kept extending the sailor bird, and I've expected me like to be named a manager for extending the sailor bird to get more bu- few more bums on seats. Yeah. But for I, me, I think that's a huge thing. That though, it's a, it's a huge. Yeah. Thing. We need to get the feel good factor back. Yeah, yeah, because it's gone. Yeah, it's, well, it needs to do, doesn't it. I mean, they were saying we're around about six thousand seeing tickets, and another good question: what someone asked and all in front. Yeah, I didn't know his name, and he said. Was how many of that's including kids as well? Not that, yeah. and it was a very, very good point. But it's yeah. like we all think, oh, yeah, 6,000 scene tickets, but how many of them are like for kids? Yeah, it's not a fair, the full members. So that's a good point. Is there like what are the t- a tenor out there? 
something like that, yeah, because like mass dif- mis- uh, discounts, and I think they're increasing yeah. to under 14s and all. So, which is great, which is great because we have got to yeah. get the kids there, we've got to get the kids involved, but it is a little bit misleading if they're a tenor in it, 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 it because it is a and do you know what? I, I, if we, we need to get kids through the door, but we've got to get kids enjoying it, yeah, and that comes down to the whole thing, that comes down to the whole thing of. They talk about match day experience. Match day experience for me is not a big thing. I go off at football and I go off at football. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. I, I mean, I think it's shambolic that you can't, like the last couple of games of the season, you've not got kiosk open and whatever. I think that's just that just sends out the wrong message to everybody. Mm. Um, I don't I don't see why we can't have a lick of paint around the ground, even if nobody knows who owns it or whatever. I, do you know what I mean? I, there's yeah. little things that are just... Discussions. That, yeah, and they're not... It, they're not difficult though, Neil. That's what that's that, do you know what I mean? They're not they're mm. not hard to put right those things. Um, well, it's like what you said as well, and that was a good point as well. Uh things needed doing out ground, like bits of paint or you know, suggestions of that. And what a great idea to be and say, look, if you want to gear time up and do a bit of work on crap, blah blah blah, here you go, you can come into the game for an hour. And, yeah. and it's like that, it's that game game back again. And and I know we're doing a lot for resident community, and I know we're doing a lot for junior tykes and that. Which fair play to club, they, you know, they always can you ima- be Can you imagine though, Neil? Can you imagine how many people around Barnsley who have got they've got small businesses and different things where, and it's it's like ah, I want you to come and let's have a bit of a bit of pride and and want you to do a bit of work around the ground and and mm. do you know what? We'll give you a season ticket because we yeah. want to we want to get you involved and we want to do it. It's not a massive gesture. It's not anything like that, but it just makes people feel a little bit more close to the club. Yeah, a bit more and appreciated it, than wanted. And it, yeah, and you know, there's there's so many people who care passionately about the club and really, really just want it to do well. Mm. Everybody wants it to do well, obviously, but there's so many people who, like I said, they want something to hold on to. They want something to... It, it, when you start losing loyal fans and you start losing people who yeah. are your diehard fans and your ones who, who always get a scene ticket, always... That's a really rocky patch. That's a really rocky road to go down that. Mm. Good point, that. And I think we'll end it on that, Tom. It's like what you said, Via. You, you, you've got to keep your, your loyal fans. And we all know what's going on from last season. And, uh, even Nareev, like, he he kept like saying, I think we all know what happened in the last four years. It weren't great. And I think deep down, he, he, he understands and he wants to address it, which we always like to say, actions louder than words as well, don't we, Tom? So yeah. it'd be interesting to see what the intent is on that. We'll see, uh, won't we? We'll see. We will. Uh, I just want to. I just want to say thanks to Tom for joining me because you come out with some uh, great content. But I want to get you back on again, Tom, as well. Uh, might get you on a live or something like that, and get some people in questions. Yeah, we'll uh, have a we'll have a catch up soon, and um, um, yeah, a few questions and that. I think. Uh, I think if we can, we all need to. We all need to come together now. We need to. It needs to. We need to start getting some positivity back, and we need to start thinking. We are all reds, aren't we? Do you know what I mean? Mm, I think mm. that's. I think you can't. You've got to not lose sight of that. Whether yeah. you, whatever mood you're in or whatever you're feeling, we're all reds, aren't we? We're all reds. It's in his blood as well, isn't it, Tom? That's it. That's <laughs> it, mate. Uh, just want to thank everybody for watching. Please leave your comments below. Let us know what your uh, uh, comments are because you've probably seen it on other forums and stuff like that. Let us know what you'll think, manager, players, and the situation at club itself. Uh, once again, thank Tom for coming on. Uh, appreciate you all for watching. One thing left to say, you Reds.